it's time for the greatest athleticism you've ever seen in your life. The pros and the leagues are shaking in their boots. With all the videos out there of talented bowlers showing their stuff, there's this series, as it is now time to watch me suck at bowling. Welcome to Game 3 of 4 for the month of March in Watch Me Suck at Bowling. How will we do this time? We got a 102 in the last game. And as you know, for this month we're doing Candle Pin. And for the month of April, we will still be here upstairs doing 10 Pin. But before we start... Watch Me Suck at Bowling is proud to sponsor the hit Candle Pin TV show King of the Palace. Watch pros, professional leagues, and other good bowlers go at it instead of watching this. To watch episodes, simply type King of the Palace in the YouTube search bar. Or if you want to subscribe if you like it, go to youtube.com slash new palace lanes. And now for the substandard stuff that you tuned in for. Frame one ball one. Probably not as good as the last game. You never know, but 100s do not come along very often. Ball two. Naughty, naughty, cheaty, cheaty. Since this place is closing for good, I am calling them out for juicing the lanes. Ball three. You might have noticed a quick little edit there. That's because I called out another place that juices, but they're still in business. And we start off with a nine, which ain't too bad. And for those of you that like pin setters, here's the Jane in action. Once again, it's different. And there you go. Frame two, ball one. Juicing is perfectly legal according to ICBA, so who cares? Pros, pro leagues, and those on tour don't like it because it's just too easy. Ball two. That half Worcester shot took out extra pins, but sometimes that's not a good thing. Ball three. If we can just hit that head pin, we could probably salvage this. Nope, it's a six. That was kind of a mixed bag. We got a decent nine in frame one, then that half Worcester ball kind of ruined everything and got a six in frame two, we are now at 15. Frame three, ball one. 15 is an average start, although I would like to do better than that. I want to ask you a question, but I can't Ball two. Again, half Worcester ball taking out extra pins, good or bad? Not as bad this time. Ball three. This half Worcester leave definitely wasn't as bad as the last one, so at least we're getting an 8. Will we get more? Of course that happened. Still, it's an 8. Frame 4, ball 1. Can we put two consecutive frames together that are pretty decent? Let's see if that'll happen. Ball 2. Of course we had to get a tough leave like that. At least we got planks on both sides that could help. Ball three. Not exactly the help we were looking for, but it was still help. Well, the planks did help. We got an eight. Those two frames didn't go too bad. We got an eight apiece, giving us a 31. And the triple is at 212. Could that fall this time around? Frame 5, ball 1. With an ultimate high score of 136 as of this recording, a 270 is just pathetic. That does not help. Ball 2, minor lobs we let live, that was within the 5 foot range. Pros and league bowlers have told me even acknowledging the line as a casual player is actually being a little hard.
Ball three. If we could only hit that elusive head pin, we still have a piece of wood that could help take out two of them. The plank did its job. It left the bowling god's middle finger for nine. Frame six, ball one. Still have not got a single mark in this game. Will we get one? Ball two. With throws like that, it's just not going to happen. Ball three. We have the center diamond and the ten pin. Yeah, that's an easy one. And it's an eight. Things were slightly better this time. Now we got a nine and five and an eight and six. One point better than the last two. Total of 48, 229 triple. Frame seven, ball one. Still looking for that elusive mark. We need it if we're gonna pass that 270. Not sure exactly where the halfway point between Worcester and the People's Republic of Cambridge is, but we're there. Ball two. Half Worcesters don't help break triple score records. Ball three, half Worcester to do me in. It seems two pins after two balls at this place means disaster. And we hit the two and eight pin, although they're already gone. And yep, disaster, another two. Frame eight, ball one. We need to bounce back from that awful two box. Will we do it? Ball two. Got another one of those ugly splits. Can we do anything with it? Yes, we did, and it's the first mark of the game. Those two frames were polar opposites, a lousy two box in seven and a spare in eight. So far, we've got at least a 60. Frame nine, El Stinko the bonus ball. That's right, it's time for El Stinko the bonus ball. What will the bonus be? Meh, five ain't bad. Ball two. Yeah, all right. Could have been the usual crappy fill, but five definitely helps the score. That was dumb luck. The stripper pole effect took out the seven for another spare. That was dumb luck. Frame 10, El Stinko the bonus ball. El Stinko making a rare back-to-back -back appearance. Let's see what this one turns out to be. El Stinko delivers an all right five, leaving a Kaliri. Ball two, another, yeah, Phil. Now the question is, can we get three spares in a row, which is known as a chicken? Yeah, that was asking a bit much, wasn't it? That piece of wood set up for a good shot, though. Ball three. Yes, it's a very obscure term, but a chicken is three spares in a row. And we end with nine. It actually turned out to be a decent game. However, it's still considered below par by ICBA standards. There we go, we got an 89. We tied the triple at 270. That stinking two box, what could have been? Anyway, that's game three of four on the candle pin floor here at Lanes and Games in the People's Republic of Cambridge. For Watch Me Suck It Bowling, this is George F551 saying hope you enjoyed and have a good one.